All right, welcome to the 12th episode of Downtime Podcast. I'm Elisa. And I am Jeremy. Apologies on my end for a little bit um, less quality audio. I'm not at my house right now. And it's okay. I'm using the laptop mic. Yay, laptop mic. Yay, laptop mic. I mean, it still gets the job done, so I guess yeah. that's fine. Clutch mic right there. Clutch mic. A few announcements. This is going to be the last podcast with Jeremy for two about two weeks. <laughs> Ever. I'm just kidding. Forever. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yep. As I said before, going to Japan to become part of the Yakuza. It's going to be fun. Yes. It's going to be wonderful. It's going to be awesome. It's I'll come back with time. back tattoos. Oh my god, back <laughs> tattoos, exactly like what you said last podcast. Yeah, just like Cosmo. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Speaking of which, after a lot of editing, the spoiler cast, another announcement, the spoiler cast for Yakuza 0 is finally up. Yep. To listen so, to. So go check that out. Technically, it's episode 8. Yes, right? it is technically episode 8. It is out of order, but now we're keeping things back in track. Yep. So if you're the fan of the Yakuza series, or if you've played Yakuza 0, please check that out. Give it a listen. Definitely. It was a really fun um, podcast to record. I agree. To kick off the podcast this week, um, some wonderful stuff is happening right now. Mm-hmm. From Valve. Really? Oh, just from Steam. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Oh, that, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, wait, what does she mean? Yes, the Steam sale. Steam sale is happening right now. It actually started on uh, Thursday, June twenty second, and it runs until June, July fourth. Yeah, so. I tried to be, I tried to be clever about it, and, and <laughs> did not, that joke did not work. Whatever. So, <laughs> I didn't pick it up. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's I was all like, uh... no. It's all good, although. Who knows? Maybe by July 4th, there's going to be a surprise and there's going to be like a new box or whatever. Who knows? Whatever. Mm. Either way, I spent very little money on six games today <laughs> for the past three days. All right. What did you buy? So I bought Final Fantasy 5 and 6. Um, nice. So uh, the first few games are older games and then i bought a, a newer game um so those final fantasies tales of symphonia i bought portal just because i love portal and i really wanted to replay it and i wanted to replay a puzzle type game nice and i also downloaded dishonored i want to play dishonored um i've been wanting to play it for a while and now that this and you know dishonored 2 is out nice very nice i think yeah i haven't gotten into dishonored yet but Seeing as that it's on sale, I think I might pick that up. Yeah, it was uh, the very um, the very first Dishonored is a really good deal. Hmm, okay. I th- I think that one was like two ninety nine. Oh wow, that's super cheap. I have to look into it. I'm one of those gamers that likes to wait for something to go on sale. So mm-hmm. I've waited for a long time for some of these games to go on sale. Oh yeah, because like it's just on your wish list and a lot of games are over fifty dollars yeah you know a lot of us have where some of us have jobs you know like we're adults now but still like sixty dollars for one game i could spend like i could spend a lot less than that for buying steam games in bulk we got we got bills in the sale to pay. yo for real though we got bills to pay and food to buy so ain't nobody got no time for that <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Dishonored is a really good price. Even Dishonored Two is a good price. Um, hmm. so I'll probably I'll probably buy that as well. Yeah, Dishonored is two forty nine right now. Holy crap! I might pick. Yeah, it up. okay. As, as we're go. doing the podcast, I probably as we're buy doing it. this podcast right now. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. Oh oh yeah. And the last game I bought is a uh, is I think the newest game. It's um it's a Metroidvania type game. It's called Ori and the Blind Forest. Oh my god, I heard so many good things about that game. Yeah, the game looks gorgeous, and I've been looking at it for a while. Finally got it, and I'm nice. going to play it when I have the Very chance. Very nice. Yes. I've heard nothing but raving reviews about that I game. I know, I'm really... Definitely, when I play it, I will let you know 
how that goes. Or you can just buy it yourself, and then we can talk about it. Yeah, I think I might do that. How much is it right now? Oh, crap. Did I buy it for $9? I don't rem- I honestly don't remember how much that one was. No worries. It was it was a good price though. It was reasonable. I of the of the games that I bought from Steam, I want I wanted to buy an indie game of some sort, and that's that's a game I've been eyeing for a while now. Yeah, and if I I think they're making a sequel. They announced it during E three. I saw that they did announce it in E three. Very nice. Very yes. nice. It's like called Ori and the Willow or something, and I'm really Ori excited. and the something. Ori and the something. I'm really <laughs> excited to uh, play both of those games. Oh, out. I'm excited for you. I, I yes. hope that uh, you do get to play it and are really exci- are very uh, happy with your purchase. You should definitely buy it as well. Of course. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll pick it up. Yeah, and what I love about Steam sales is you can just buy 10 games without breaking the bank. <laughs> for real. So the Steam sale, I bought Necrovision, which is this really shitty like World War, II, <laughs> World War One shooter. I bought it because I played the demo, and I'm a fan of run and gun shooters that are some. I'm a fan of run and gun shooters, but I'm also a fan of run and gun shooters that are shitty because I like I like to be challenged in a way. <laughs> I like to be challenged by shitty ass games. <laughs> it's true. It's very true. I really do. I really do because. Um, <laughs> There's this game called Deadfall Adventures that's my by the same uh, developer, and okay. it's about this discount Indiana Jones. What's that? Who is the developer? Uh, Planet Fifty One or something. I think that's their name. Hmm, I don't know them. Anyways, something yeah. something. Did you say Lord of the Rings or Indiana Jones? I <laughs> Indiana Jones. Indiana okay, Jones. I was like, you said yeah. something. It's okay. <laughs> I don't remember no. what you said. They're like a dis. It's like a discount Indiana Jones is the game. And that alone is a good description of how shitty this game looks and how shitty it's probably going to play if I ever buy it. So does that mean it's an Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull? <laughs> yes. Of the four <laughs> Indiana Jones movies, it's the Crystal Skull. Uh, oh. But I didn't buy this game yet. I, I'm planning to, but uh, yeah, they de- uh, yeah, they developed um, Necrovision. So I'm going to play Necrovision and I'm going to rant about it in the future podcast. All right. Sounds great. There's a lot of... Uh, unfortunate thing with freaking buying a lot of games is now once again my backlog's building up and <laughs> yep i bought three more games one of them is state of decay year one survival edition it's okay. an open world zombie game so it's oh, kind of cool very yeah nice. it yeah. was only 10 bucks it's been That's on my wish list for like two years it's probably because the last of us was just stealth fatigue but i'm not a fan i i i mean i wouldn't say i'm not a fan but i don't play uh zombie games that much i got you yeah but i do appreciate i do appreciate them for what they are (laughs) yeah yeah it's not for everyone it's one of those it's the the kind of genre that you really have to get used to and grow on kind of like playing it's like playing left for dead you know there's a difference between playing like left for dead and then another like slower zombie game like the walking dead Mm-hmm. the telltale game because uh you just have to have the patience and you have to have uh you just have to not be afraid of zombies overall that's very true because that shit can get to you for can real you imagine a, oh i bet you oh because resident i was about to say there's probably some res, um vr zombie games right now and then i just thought of resident evil i imagine and, like outlast on vr holy crap and that's something i'm not going to try <laughs> I have not bought it, I have not played it, and I will not look into it. Because <laughs> that game freaks the shit out of me. I know. Yep. No, I know what you mean. Like some zomb- I like I like some zombie games that are part of a bigger franchise, such as Resident Evil, Yeah. Uh, Left 4 Dead. But um, other than that, I don't really like to touch a lot of the scarier indie zombie games that just freak me out. Oh, hell no. Yeah, I don't touch that. Yeah, I don't touch that shit. It's not on my wish list. <laughs> <laughs> what else is on your wish list? Two more games. So the second one is Starbound, and we talked about this before. Yes, I can't wait for you to play that game. Yeah, I oh I God. will get to it after I finish. Um, what's it called? Uh, Just Cause Three. I'm like halfway done with Just Cause Three. Okay, that's the game. Um, you didn't particularly like though, right? Yep, I'm trying to finish it because I spent 20 bucks on it and I want to spend as much time as I did pay for it. So 
I slit Fair. my wrist every time. Oh my god. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, I don't do that. That's that's horrible. I yeah. it's just it's fun because I, I like open world games and I like destroying stuff and I think it's really fun to just do all that. But at the yes. same time, it's it's just it's really tedious, like doing mm-hmm. the same thing over and over again. I wish there was more variety. And the last game on my Steam purchase list so far is Bigfoot. It's originally titled Finding Bigfoot. It's an indie game by uh, these guys from I forgot Ukraine or something. There's Ukraine? like four. I forgot what country they're from, but they're not from the U.S. Okay. And uh, yeah, it's a team of like three developers and one animator, and basically, it's about uh, you and two other people can play together co-op, and it's set in Jasper National Park, which is in Canada. Wait, is it? And, it's in Jasper. Uh huh. Oh, it. Uh, Jasper is Calgary, or like not Calgary, but it's in the province of Alberta. That's where I would have visited if my flight to Canada was not canceled. <laughs> no, you would have found Bigfoot. <laughs> I would have found Bigfoot there if I had the chance. Exactly. Yeah, and so it's set there. And um, I that of the purchases, that is the only game I've played so far. And I've spent five, no, six hours playing it with my brother. We both bought it at the same time. And I will tell you that that game freaked me out the first time I played it because Bigfoot attacks you at, in during the nighttime. And... Holy crap, does he attack you? There are times when we would just sit in the trailer waiting for, you know, looking at the cameras, and then we'd hear, like, a growl, and the trailer would start shaking. And then we're like, what was that? And, like, did Bigfoot attack us? And then after a while, like, let's say another three minutes would go by, he'd come through the front door, like, break open the front door and grab one of us and, and then, like, like hurt us. And we were screaming while we were playing this game because it was just so freaky. <laughs> did you wake yeah. up your neighbors? No, we didn't scream that loudly, but we were just like freaking out. Okay. Um, yeah, I highly yeah, recommend that's this game. Creepy. Oh yeah, no, totally. This is one of the few survival horror games that I started playing, and I was I was legitimately scared because this game really made me want to stay in the trailer and not go outside. But overall, I highly recommend this game to <laughs> anyone who's who's looking I into it. I feel like it's uh, like amnesia. Yeah, imagine an amnesia with friends. I mean, it's a little bit more yeah. bearable. Yeah, like less ha- less haunting, more just the sh- um, jump scare. But even though jump scares can be scary. Yeah, if done well, I think dump- jump scares could be scary. Definitely. I remember um, I had a group of friends uh, back in back in college. Um, there were a bunch of coworkers who just went over to someone's house and they would just play Slenderman and they- it would just be a group of eight just taking turns. <laughs> on my friend's desktop playing it oh my god yeah and now on uh through through mods and gmod you can play slender man with like eight people i think with one person being slender man i know and that's pretty exciting that's pretty cool i mean still yeah. like i would stick together if i were those people i would stay together i when i first heard about bigfoot i thought it was gonna be more of like i didn't think it would actually be on the scary side it just seemed more like a hunt game it is that in the daytime uh well here's the thing it is a hunt game if you want to play it that way because there's two there's daytime and then there's nighttime for the cycles of uh the game uh I think each is like fifteen minutes fifteen mm-hmm. minutes of daytime fifteen minutes of nighttime the daytime um is for setting up traps um and setting up uh cameras to like find where Bigfoot is Got it. Bigfoot Bigfoot can be found during the day it's just it's extremely rare to find him during the day yeah um uh he does roam around and stuff but. Uh, that's what the traps are for and the cameras are for to set up the cameras in front of the traps. Yeah. Um, but overall, it's nighttime is when he finds you. Like, it's up to you to find him during the day if you want to. Okay. But if he finds you at night and that's when it starts to get freaky. Got it. Yeah. So I think it, it's a little bit, it's a hybrid of both. They're still working on the game. No, None of the assets right now, if you buy the game, are final. Again, it's still an early access game. Mm-hmm. The developers have stressed that they've retextured everything. They posted some screenshots of what they're working on. They're nice. creating a new level for the game that's set in the Himalayas that has a Yeti instead of Bigfoot, which I think is pretty cool. That's awesome. Um, I would yeah, want to hunt yeah. for a Yeti. Exactly. And then, I think um, it's really cool. I, I like how they choose actual locations for their monsters to take yeah. place. Yeah, I mean, I like that too because it has adds a little bit more realism to the game. It's fun. It's it's almost like fun trivia. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're building a lot on the lore of the actual myths mm-hmm. of these monsters, so I think that's kind of cool. Yes. Um, 
yeah, they they're adding like drones and like better cameras to this to the game and four player co op instead of just three player co op this time. Oh, that's pretty exciting. Yeah. Wait, so. I feel like three player co op is such a random number. Yeah, I think they did that because they want I my guess is that since there were three guys initially, they wanted to make oh, a game they okay. could play together, you know? So, um yeah, I think the developers wanted to make a game the three of them could play together for one goal. And I kinda like that. Mm-hmm. Far it feels like they're it's it they're still working on it and there's a lot that could be done with it creatively. Mm-hmm. Right now, the goals are very basic. Find Bigfoot, find put him in the cage, and then find uh, the missing campers. Yeah. And yeah, those are the three main goals. And after that, you win. But um, yeah, I highly recommend it to you, Elisa, if you are willing to check it out. Probably. I'll probably buy it on Steam, because why not? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just Let another... me know. We could play it together. Yes, another game to add to my backlog. <laughs> so yesterday, if you're listening to this on... Um, June 20... Well, whenever this comes out. Uh, yesterday, June 26th, it, ch- 6th, is when the Super NES got announced. Was it yesterday or was it today? I forgot. I think it was, uh, I think it was yesterday, but they started building upon it today yeah. as well. The Super NES Classic got announced. It's the SNES Classic. There's going to be mm-hmm. like 20... 20- 20-ish game, like 20-ish games included on the classic edition. Yeah, there's 21 games, and on the box this is 20 plus 1, and I think that plus 1 is Star Fox 2, a game yeah. that has never been released in the West, or at mm-hmm. least at all, I think. Oh, yeah. So that's kind of cool. That's awesome. I think what's re- what, what I think is really cool is there's also going to be a Japanese version of it, the um, that look, the, the Famicom. Oh. And um, as well as Europe has a version of it, too. That's really cool. Like, the version that came out in that region, right? Yeah, I believe so. Oh, that's so awesome. depending, So depending on where you're from, that's the uh, that's the type of uh, console you get. Dude, that's so cool. I know. Nintendo's really killing it right now. They are. They got the Switch. They got this. I almost kind of want to get one. <laughs> Me too. I've never actually owned a SNES growing up. I owned an NES and a Genesis. Yeah, I've never, I've never owned a Nintendo console growing up. Oh no, no, no! I'm sorry. <laughs> I take that back. I owned a Game Boy. <laughs> Aside from that, I do okay. have, I haven't owned like an actual like s- s- uh, set console or a console gotcha. that you just kind of set down. But it, it's a really right, good right, deal right. for eighty dollars. I think unless you're for have- real though. Unless you have an emulator and then everything's free. Yeah, that's actually true. I want to pick one up for the novelty, but I do have an emulator PC in my living room that has all that stuff. And it has like USB um, controllers for like SNES looking USB controllers. Yeah. And I, that's the only thing that's deterring me away from buying this the NES, the Super NES Classic is because I built, my brother and I built this PC in our living room specifically to pay, play these um classic nintendo games that's so okay I, yeah that's really cool um this is def- this definitely feels like a novelty uh a nostalgic novelty thing for fans especially uh probably catering those to fans who sold their nes growing up and, yeah yeah um just to just to bring it back and go upon the nostalgia trend yeah, I think that's why the first one sold really well is because a lot of people felt nostalgic about the NES and they mm-hmm. wanted to buy something that was at least close to it. And that's mm-hmm. what I think. That's why I think this new upcoming console, the the NES, the Super, uh, the SNES Classic is gonna sell really, really, really well. Is because a lot of people growing up in our generation uh, grew up playing the SNES and owning yes. it and loving it and loving all the games on it. So that's why I feel like this one's gonna sell out quicker and it's gonna it's just gonna go it's gonna go crazy when it sells out. If they ever come out with a like a N six N sixty four classic, I will probably buy that. Like, no joke. Oh, like if they ha- if they have a N sixty four in this type of format where it's like a mi- mm. a collector's mini edition. Yep, I'll probably buy that one because N sixty four was a really big console when I was growing up. That was probably the one that I um that I played like at dentist appointments and. <laughs> cousins houses i'm not i and i'm like totally not kidding but what was it called yeah um, no i believe you 
Oh god, uh, Pokemon Snap. Oh have you, yeah. Have you played I Pokemon own it. Snap? Yeah. That game. I own that game. Is just such. It's you're just taking random pictures of Pokemon, but it's the most fun that I've ever had on Nintendo sixty four for whatever fucking reason. <laughs> Yeah, no, you know what? I don't know why they made, didn't make a sequel to that game. That game was really fun and popular. I don't. I'm not sure. They, yeah. they could have so many useful applications in, in today's technology. I know to use that to play that game. You know. Yeah. I now don't that, know. Nintendo. Seriously. Yeah. Now that I think about it, Nintendo Snap didn't have uh, uh, Pokemon Snap didn't have a sequel. Yeah, I mean, think about it. If it was uh, if they had a sequel on the Wii or at least the Switch, that'd be so cool. Like that would be you really could, like, awesome. Play with your friends. There's so much more. There's so many Pokemon now because before it was limited to just 150. Oh, I know, now there's right? like 600 or 700. So come on, Nintendo, yeah. make a sequel, seriously, or at least a re- remake of the first game. <laughs> that would be really fun, especially because now there's mobile, um, mobile phones and all these different things. There's just a lot of ways they could do that. Yeah, they're like AR, at least like an AR version of Pokemon Snap in real life. You so know, if po- it Go. yeah, so if because a lot of people when they caught Pokemon on Go, they just screenshot at their phone. But if there was just yeah, um, like a fun um system where you got the Snap and it's like you're in a safari or whatever. But this is a, I think the SNES is gonna be very gonna make a lot of people happy yep it's gonna make a lot of money for nintendo and everyone who played a snes growing up is gonna be extremely happy anything else on the agenda other than we covered snes we covered steam sales we covered kind of what we're playing oh i just want to um before we end i just want to talk quickly about my persona 5 updates okay sure yeah I'm almost done with Persona 5. I think that I'm one more palace away from finishing the game. Um, it's probably going to be um, this weekend, maybe um, a few days after the weekend finishing it. Um, I'm, everything makes sense now. <laughs> the, oh, nice. The story has come together. After this certain palace, it the entire story comes together. And every question what? might be every question that you had is answered and oh man the game almost kind of betrays you in a way oh no <laughs> i know i i really wish i could talk in depth about it but i will just say that the plot twist i legit cried for a good like 5 minutes because i thought because of something that happened on the plot twist Oh shit! <laughs> I know. I'm going to finish it soon so that I can buy Tekken Seven and play that and play all my Steam games. Do it. Do yeah. It. And then what's gonna be nice is Tekken Seven is not like a story based game, so I can um knock things off my backlog. Yep, and you and can just enjoy it at your own time and your exactly. own leisure. Exactly. That is all I have to say. Um, yeah, Persona is awesome. Nice. Nice. On my end, I'm still playing Just Cause Three, as I said before, and uh, yes. yeah, whatever. <laughs> nothing to nothing to report there. <laughs> nothing to report with Just Cause. Just Cause. Just Cause. And for next week, I will find someone to talk to. <laughs> you don't. You don't. Have, you don't have a plan yet. <laughs> I don't have a plan yet. Um. Well, I guess a part of me, if I do finish. If I finish Persona 5, I'm probably going to ask my friend Kevin if he wants to do a spoiler cast with me. Do it! Do and, it! Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I gotta pack for Japan. I gotta get my, my clothing ready, my black suit, and my white shirt. What? <laughs> I'm gonna be in the Yakuza! Black suit! Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, what is going on? I was referencing also Kazuma, like, Kiryu's, like... Although, you have uh, to... Okay, Kiryu has, a like, a cream beige suit... With yeah. a orange Hawaiian shirt of sorts. Orange Hawaiian shirt. I don't know if I'm going to wear that <laughs> under my cream beige shirt. I know. Let me know how uh, how the arcades are in Japan when you visit. Uh, yeah. I'm probably going to go to one or two. We'll see. Yeah. If you can go to Sega or something, that would be pretty awesome. Just, cause, just like in the game. <laughs> just like in the game. But really, though, I think Sega is the number one arcade in Japan. I think so, too. Yeah, so that would be fun. 
I oh, hope, yeah, dude. Yes. I hope you have a very good trip. Thanks. I hope I have a good trip, too. And I can talk a little bit about it when I come back if I yeah, uh, def- have time for it. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for listening to the 12th episode of Downtime Podcast. I will talk to you all next week. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Yep. We'll talk to you guys. I'll talk to you guys in two weeks, and hopefully you'll have a good time next week listening to Elisa talking about persona or whatever topic she has in mind. Whatever happens. I don't know yet. (laughs) Yeah, it's okay. We'll get there. (laughs) Yes. All right. Have a good night. Yep. Bye-bye.